Okay, this is another video from the angry photographer. Drew Ritter, Drew Ritter wanted me to uh, critique some of his photos. He's got a lot of them, and I weeded through an enormous amount of them and pulled out some uh, primary examples. Uh, I don't like doing this, and I told Drew this, but uh, mainly because they kind of uh, rake you over the coals in photography school, and there's someone always raking your photos, and it kind of burns you out. And, you know, you should never take something you have a lot of fun with, and have someone critiquing it because we all know art critics are stinkers and you know fuck it you know everybody's got an asshole and like an opinion and they all stink but there are empirical criteria for beauty and what constitutes a good photograph outside of what someone in their own particular art form wants to do but you know someone wants to just take a snapshot and sometimes that's just what they are they're snapshots not like well I'm gonna compose this to be beautiful it's just a record of what I saw and it doesn't necessarily have to be beautiful so, you know, some of his shots might be like that, but let's uh, take a quick uh, jaunt through some of them and uh, talk about, instead of critiquing Drew Ritter's photographs uh, based upon, well, you know, I think it's this because I, you know, I like this. Or, you know, there's a lot of people that critique stuff like that, but I'm actually talk about the technical side of beauty. It's like, well, how do you talk about the technical side of beauty in critiquing a photograph? And there is empirical criteria such as like uh, the vortex premise and the funnel effect and the rule of thirds and uh, how your eye is drawn, compositional quality, how it's moved. Uh, this one, you can either crop it at the shot or you can crop it in post. But what you have is here is a beautiful photograph that has some divine light, uh, great saturation, it's beautiful. But we do, we have this over here fighting for this over here. So what I would have done either when taking the shot or uh, done in post is I would have uh, taken the shot or taken it in post and you can see that this is empirically so a more beautiful photograph than uh, this one is because what happens with this is my eye is fighting for what's over here overall we have a gorgeous photograph but my eye is fighting this for what we have over here and uh, I actually would have taken this slightly different, but I would have included more over here if there wasn't a truck and a silo back over the air. But here, my eye isn't fighting for anything. It's being drawn in, and I'm enjoying the beauty of it without fighting of what's going on over here. You know, obviously, there's tons of shots, endless tons of shots, where there's tons of things to go on, your eyes drawing in, looking at all sorts of things. But for shots like this and its compositional beauty, it is still unhappy looking at this instead of fighting with uh, looking at the truck and the silo over there on the left. But he might have just make, done that as a recorded uh, shot for, you know, for record keeping. He wasn't necessarily thinking about compositional beauty. This is a gorgeous shot. It needs a slight little bit more contrast, but he's looking at texture. He's looking at light. Uh, it's an excellent photograph. I mean, there's absolutely no, no fault of his. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love these sort of shots, and most uh, pros do. This is an exquisite shot. Uh, the depth of field, what it commands, and how it draws your eye in. The gorgeous mountains. Uh, I don't know if he used a polarizer on this. It almost looks like he did. But I can see every rivet in the tail, and I can see the detail up in the mountains. And you're drawn in here, and it's just sweeping. It's sweeping. It's gorgeous. The textures, the composition. Uh, your your eye is drawn into the mountains along the uh, the lines of the beautiful plain. This doesn't distract from anything over here. This uh, other little plain, it's gorgeous. There's nothing to change about this. It's beautiful compositionally, empirically. It's just a gorgeous shot. These are the sort of shots that uh, make magazines. They're they're wonderful. It's uh, there's everything about this that should be there is there, and everything that shouldn't be there isn't there. Gorgeous shot. Uh, it needs to emulate stuff like that and apply it to other things. This is like a typical Boris boring tourist shot. He probably is just taking this as a snap of somewhere he was leaving on a boat. Um, it's very dull, dull, dry, and lifeless. It actually doesn't say anything. It's too broad. My eye isn't drawn in towards anything. It's a, a photograph that's to be rejected unless it's for record keeping only. Everybody kind of makes shots like this. It's no big deal. Um, wonderful. I mean, this is sort of, sort of uh, uh, kitschy stuff you see in the various magazines. Uh, it's exciting. It's entertaining. It's uh, it does need a little bit better lighting. It's a little too flat. He uh, should have used a, a filter on it. Uh, he can actually change that in post. Up the contrast a little bit. It's a little flat. It's compositionally beautiful. It's wonderful. It's funny. 
and it's an excellent photograph and there's only a couple things that could have been changed on that but I mean not every photograph has to be tweaked to hell this is a gorgeous photograph um, the framing have my eyes drawn in along the skyline along the waters it's absolutely gorgeous it's not flat even though it is generally a low contrast shot it's compositionally beautiful how your eye is drawn in you can see right here that I'm actually swept into the picture it tells me a lot it says a lot not everything has to be contrasty and even though this is evenly lit foreground to background the compositional beauty of this actually far overrides uh, any necessity to have any bright specular highlights like the sun reflecting in some of these windows not everything has to be that way as long as it is compositionally beautiful and accurate this is a divine and lovely shot it's a job well done nothing really needs to be done to it at all this says a lot I mean you don't know if the cops are looking at a gruesome crime scene but this is wonderful I know back here where you can't see at a frame there is uh, some uh, cop lights or some uh, uh, fire truck lights and it's illuminating this you think of red evil and death and the cops are looking on he has his one hand on his gun and they're looking at uh, what would be like a house from hell but all that's happening is it's actually being the red uh, red illumination from the the, the uh, fire trucks it is masterful it makes you think it's a perfect shot it's the stuff that makes magazines it's the stuff that makes uh, print it's wonderful, it's exquisite, um, it's a divine shot. It says more than just the light, it says more than the composition, it makes you think. It is eerie, it's spooky, it's wonderful, it's exciting. Uh, this stuff entices people, people love to stare into this for a long time, and yet they don't know why. Um, this is a bad shot because all you're doing is being blinded uh, by a, uh, a light from the truck. I know what he's trying to do here, but uh, shots like this are overwhelming. When uh, a photograph shoots someone in the eyeball and everything else becomes uh, basically non-existent, you know, you have to avoid stuff like that, but, you know, that's just a learning point. No big deal at all. But it's a shot that uh, is compositionally unbeautiful. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's just a reject photograph, but, you know, maybe he just took this as a... Uh, as a record keeping photograph he wasn't thinking in terms of art or composition when he necessarily took this I can't read his mind when he tried to do that this is the stuff nobody takes so people should be taking and not everything has to be in focus there's no problem with blur you know when you actually are, get to depth and you and or, or you get action in a shot you know the blur of the fire truck this is a beautiful shot um, if you'd actually used the flash and actually frozen, used rear curtain sync, the one thing that would have improved this drastically is if you used a front curtain or rear curtain sync and you could have got one thing in focus. Typically like this, now well, everything is out of focus on this shot. What makes this better, even though it stands alone as a great shot itself, what makes it even better, would have made it even better, is if you used a front and rear curtain sync so we could have actually frozen one thing like the fire truck and still had the blur of motion. Um, people prefer those shot. It is, has an empirical beauty to it because our eyes are always constantly snapping. The same way cops actually will flash a speeding car as it goes by. Even though the car is going by at 80 miles an hour and everything is blurred, when they flash their lights as the car goes uh, by, they're actually able to get a mental image of the person's face in great detail. And uh, the same thing happens in flash photography. You should use the flash on this for front or rear curtain sync. But a shot like this is also empirically valid uh, as a great composition. You're showing action in here. Um, typically, one thing people prefer one thing to be in focus, either foreground or background. If you are trying to express motion in the photograph, but photographs like this, where everything is in blur, is also equally valid and appear in magazines, National Geographic, the rest. And people do like them, and it has an empirical beauty to it. People like seeing action in a shot like this. So, um, perfect composition, perfect symmetry where your eye is drawn in here, the clouds, the subject matter he even has great exposure inside the old brick, I don't know whatever it was you can actually see the brick and mortar inside the building it's compositionally beautiful, I don't know if he actually used a polarizer in this, I don't think he did um, it is not flat, it's gorgeous, there's nothing to change on this stuff like this is exquisite um, there's nothing more to say about it, it's great same thing here, looking at textures, excellent photograph, nothing you change about it. 
It's a darling, it's lovely, the tree, it's compositionally beautiful. It's uh, it's beautiful in its illumination. He said, taking into account uh, the shadows over here, the field, uh, depth of field, he's even uh, able to d differentiate out the trees in the far hillside back over here. It's wonderful. I gave it like an 8 out of 10. This is a dead shot. What he should have done is recompose it better, either in shot or in post and crop. What we do is we have one thing fighting for another thing. On wide shots like this, it's appropriate in certain circumstances where tons of things are fighting. When it comes to shots like this, what needs to be done is not necessarily this, but something like this. And so what we do is we have a shot like, instead of that, we've got a shot like this, slightly different. This is a bit too centered. Would have had it further over here, but something closer to that where you have one thing competing with nothing. So you're drawing into the shot and you're able to think about one thing instead of all this stuff. Um, this is a beautiful shot. I give it a 10 out of 10. It's exquisite. It's divine. He say incorporated all the lighting, the reflection off the, off, the, uh, off the boat hulls from back behind the camera. The actual lights coming from the skyscrapers across the waters. It's compositionally beautiful. It's beautiful, period. There's nothing to cut out of this. Yeah, he should have taken like 20 or 30 different shots of this particular beautiful light. When you find beautiful light like this, you just don't grab one shot. You take a dozen different ones at various angles. And you get up close, you get far away, you just squeeze the dog shit out of it. It's like finding a tasty orange, you know, you squeeze the shit out of it. It's like, well, okay, I've taken the perfect picture. Yeah, that's right, but well, you got the perfect light here, what you do. What he may or may not have done that he should have done is when you find exquisite light like this where everything is just divine and it's just pure fu Illumination-wise, when it's pure fucking sex like this, what you do is you don't stop. I mean... It's like having great sex with a gorgeous chick or something. Not that I would know. It's been so many years. But <laughs> what you do is you take tons and tons of shots. You take shots up here, going across the water, back, over here, over here, there. You know, you change your lighting. You change everything. You do some fill flash. It's perfect as it is. But you squeeze the ever-loving fuck out of a great picture like this when you have perfect light and everything's beautiful and your subject matter is gorgeous. That's always what a pro does. He says... Right here, I've got awesome potential. I'm going to squeeze the balls out of it until it is fucking gone, you know. So you just don't take a shot or two. You you really, I mean, they'll spend an hour or two just taking like a hundred shots of this whole area at various angles and whatnot. So that's what you do when you find beautiful light like this. You exploit the shit out of it. Great shot. Wonderful. Excellent family photo. This shot is particularly divine. This is exactly what professional would produce. You have you don't have the mother's uh, face looking at the child and the face looking at the photographer competing. What you do is you have a perfect composition here over everything is drawn into the baby and the baby is looking at you or the photographer actually in this case but both are the case because someone is drawn in and they're thinking what is the baby thinking it looks happy the mother's looking happy it is beautiful compositionally everything here is just perfect uh, it's exquisite um, that's probably why he picked it up but he might not have known it um, there's an empirical beauty to this outside of the subject matter the mother looking at the child it is just exquisite how your eye is actually drawn right into here from the mother's face looking into the beautiful child's face and the child looking into you therefore you are drawn into this and everything is drawn into the child the picture is exquisite it's a 10 out of 10 it's another example of beautiful light what can you say about this if you don't know why this picture isn't awesome then there's something wrong with it you need to get out of photography it's just exquisite it's exploitation of beautiful light. It's hunting down good light and grabbing it just like a deer hunter. You know, will take on camouflage and cover himself with deer urine and, you know, go out and hunt in the woods. It's your hunting for good light. He found it. You know, someone else might think, well, there's nothing there to look at. No, it's beautiful light. It's exquisite. You know, you make a 20 by 30 print of that and hang it on your wall. It's gorgeous. You can look at it or it could be a cold winter day and you look at that beautiful Autumn uh, picture, I assume it's autumn or spring, and uh, you know it draws you in. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Another exquisite picture. Compositionally, this is a wonderful. 
Uh, the exposure is great. I can still see the mortar and the bricks. You don't always have to have high dynamic range. People will suffer this horrible nonsense where they think that everything has to have perfect high dynamic range from shadows to highlights. It is not true. Sometimes less is more. Often less is more. The Greeks knew about this. It's called apophosis, apophoticism. It's a via negativa where your mind paints the rest of the picture. It's a gorgeous picture. It's lovely. Give it an 8 out of 10. This is about what I was talking about. You're looking for the gritty and the dirty. It doesn't have to be a pretty picture. It just has to be pretty light or pretty textures. Your eyes drawn in, it makes you think. People love textures like that. There is something about the eye that loves looking at it, even though it looks like an old bed pad, maybe, or an old bathtub, stuff like that. Neat people need to take more pictures of. I've been doing that for years. I love taking pictures like that. This should have been compositionally recomposed different because you don't know what the trick he's doing. What you could do is you can actually change the crop value during the shot or after by saying what the turkey's doing. Right now you have the turkey near the water. Okay, well, it, why is he near the water? Well, what does this say? Instead of this shot, let's take a look at the difference. I've cropped it after. You can crop it while you're shooting it or afterwards. Now we have a story where the turkey is at the water to take a drink. So not only is it compositionally better, Rule of thirds, same picture, but we're also telling a story that the, the turkey is headed towards the water, he's about to take a drink. So your composition and your crop tells a story, and if it does that, then that exposes your shot to more interest and more interest from the viewer to draw themselves in. This could have used a little bit of fill flash. It's uh, gorgeous. Um, nice slower shutter speed. Could have used a little bit more contrast. Um, could have used some fill flash. What you should have done is actually taken uh, a fill flash, a flash way below and actually illuminated some of these waters. It got some specular highlights in the waters or off the rocks. And that would have improved things drastically. The picture is beautiful. We'll give it like a 7 or 6 out of 10. Stuff like this people need to take more of. Doesn't matter if it's a Christmas tree or whatever it is. Nothing's in focus. People love this. It's beautiful. They wonder. I mean, they may probably guess it's a Christmas tree. But it's all about looking at light differently. You're about mastering light, so this picture is exquisite. Uh, this shot is lacking something serious, even though it's a gorgeous shot and a lovely model, or if it's wife, whoever it is. Uh, you should have used some fill flash on her, and then this shot would have been perfect. It is valid as it is, but right now it is just flat as ironed bread. Um, it needs more contrast, and she needs some fill flash. Her pose is fine, although you know there are innumerable poses she could have made, but she needed some fill flash. This is why it's so important to get your camera off your flash, your fl <laughs> your flash off your camera. She had your uh, flash off your camera, been pointing it down at her and giving her some fill light, and uh, that would have made this picture a lot better compositionally. It's wonderful. However, what I would have done is have taken some fill flash. Filled her in, given some contrast to draw you into the subject, and I would have cropped it more. There's a ton, of, several different ways you could crop this and made it better, but this is much better right here. And then some fill light on her, and then this would have been a much more lovely picture. But, uh, you know, that's the stuff that everybody learns, it's no big deal, and uh, his pictures are great, you know. Some of his pictures were just basically record keeping. I don't know what he was thinking. He wasn't thinking in every shot, you know. I'm going to think about composition and this and that. You know, I just wanted to grab a great picture and he took it. And that's what a lot of people do. But the more you think, the better become. The more you think about this stuff, the less you have to think. What does that mean? It means the more you think about it, the less you'll have to think about it. What does that mean? It means it will become so deeply ingrained into your head. It is just like knowing how to ride a bicycle. Once you know how to ride a bicycle, you don't have to think about it anymore. And it's the same way. When you start thinking about how to improve your photographs the less you will have to think about improving your photographs so if he actually starts thinking more about stuff like this then it'll be so deeply ingrained in his head it'll be like muscle memory it'll be boom he knows immediately what to do and he won't have to spend a thing single second second thinking about it it will become second nature so uh, I don't like to do critiques but he asked me to do it and so that's it and so those were Drew Ritter's uh, beautiful photographs I went through a lot of them and I picked out some of the primary ones and <laughs> thanks for watching it's another video from the angry photographer I was doing a criticism of Drew Ritter's photographs or a critique which I don't like doing because I don't like doing that to other people's photographs but he asked me so nevertheless <laughs> there it is thanks Drew